Yeah, I would um, delete and rewrite the entry that Karen had put. She came close, but that's not what I said. So just she can have this copy of the uh, what I actually read, and you know we can enter that into the minutes because that's all I really said when it came to the history part. So. But it doesn't, you know, she captured the gist of what was done there. Okay. Gotcha. Exactly accurate. Uh, Laura, I mean, Courtney, I can't hear anybody. Okay. Um, one second, Alex just left. Can you see us? I can see you and I can hear you say that, but I couldn't hear what you said you didn't say. <laughs> I said your, your minutes were thorough, but inaccurate as to what I said. So. Um, what did you, know. you say that I didn't? I was going to Well, you were given a chance to fix that online, and I, 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 I read through it. I wasn't quite sure how how we were going to fix it. So, oh, two thousand two thousand study was conducted. The building which showed that the tower needs to be reinforced. And this is from the number fourteen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it said that, and. In the early 2000s, measures were taken to ensure that the building would be safe and usable. Electrical update, updates, uh, historic buildings were removed from the tower, and the tower was reinforced from below. And there's no, there's no specific date on that. I didn't get to Gary to ask him exactly when that repair took place. I think it was in the 90s, though. I think it was past the year 2000. Thank you. Thank you. Which minutes was this? The the, uh, the minutes from the the um, forum from the what oh from the forum oh all right it got it, you got close and you did a great job there's a lot here it covered quite a bit oh, thank, thank you. you even though I didn't take notes <laughs> yeah. no, I know you did it all from memory so it was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> So, could uh, why don't you email me, Dan? What should be corrected? Uh, okay. Yeah, when I get back, I'll just email you the thing that I wrote or yeah read. And um, also, your history of the building was so wonderful. I wanted that to be part of the minutes too. Yeah, well, we can certainly can you email that. me that. Oh, no, that's fine. Okay. I'll forward you that thing out. So, please, can you tell me who's here? I know Alan's here. Who else is here? <laughs> hey, Courtney. Um, Dragon can not come. Um, and then we have a guest, Gregory, here as well. You're the one I can't understand, Courtney. I lost, I lost my voice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Laura, did she ever get out? Laura, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> okay, we'll get to you in a second. Thank you. <laughs> so, Dragon is missing. Okay, great. What? Why are you saying your last name? K W O L E K. W O L L E K. Correct. All right. Um, what about the minutes from 1024? Can you approve those? Motion to approve. I'll second. Uh, all in favor, Carolyn? 
Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. I approve as well. So we have this approval of 1024 minutes. Um, so in the effort to um, recognize Laura Baker's time, I thought we would skip forward to funding opportunities. Um, <clears throat> so Laura is the real estate development development director at the CBC. Um, I reached out to her um, for some advice on, you know, if we were to proceed on any of these um, options of rehabbing the building, um, what sort of funding there may be. Um, so Laura, I don't know if you want to take it here. So uh, I really can't hear you, Courtney, either. I think one of the issues, if, if do you have an owl in the room? Yeah. What I hear on the owl is turning papers. So the gentleman in the red sweatshirt appears to be closest to the owl. So what we're, what we're hearing is all the paper shuffling. And then I don't know if the owl can sit closer to the other members yeah. who are present. I think that's a good suggestion. If we, I don't know if we can move it or if we, want, we can switch places. Stand by. Thank you. Okay, I'll, I was pretty much 360. So as long as we all speak, it'll be okay. Lord, yeah, the view is fine. It, you know, it rotates. It's just the sound has been funky. Um, okay, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so um, I, you know, I came just to be a good participant, really. Um, I can talk a little bit about, you know, I don't know a lot about the building. I'm sure you folks know a lot more than I do, but I can talk in some uh, kind of generalities about, you know, there are a lot of school buildings in New England that have been converted to housing uses. It's kind of a common um, transition. Um, some of them uh, have used historic tax credits and made a real effort to preserve the historic fabric of the buildings. Others have not done that. Um, there are examples of both market rate, uh, you know, condominium or apartment conversions uh, from schools. Uh, Courtney and I were just emailing about the Hatfield Center School, uh, which was recently converted, which I thought was kind of a good comparable to the Russell School in that it's a fairly small building, uh, an old historic building in a prominent location in the town that had very hefty capital needs. Um, which I understand the Russell School does as well. Um, those, uh, that construction is completed and those uh, market rate condos are on the market now. Um, so assuming they sell, that's a successful reuse of uh, a very challenging old school building. Um, I have a colleague who worked on conversion of the Mosley School uh, in Westfield, which was converted to affordable housing. And they were able to create, I believe, 28 apartments in that building. So a lot of our work um, hinges on scale. So what I know of the Russell School is that probably just as a, as a freestanding structure by itself, it would be very, very difficult to convert to affordable housing because of its small size. Um, I think if the community was seriously interested in an affordable housing reuse, um, there would need to be an addition to the building. I've heard rumors, but I don't know for sure that the land adjacent, it's a, it's a pretty good sized parcel, adjacent to the school building is wetlands. If that is not a for sure known thing, I would strongly recommend um, that the committee or the town get a wetland scientist on site to evaluate that condition. I think- But it's floodplain. Floodplain. But it really is, is compensatory storage for the uh, flood event. So in other words, if, if, if you do anything to that piece of land, you have to replace that land somewhere else in town with comparable compensatory okay. storage. Um, my understanding, it's not right there, the wetlands. It's over by the playing field at the high school. Right? It's right there on Route 9. Wetlands is a... Is a Pardon me? It's, it's, it's subject to the Wetlands Act, but the wetlands covers floodplains as well as 
you know, biological yeah. weapons. All right. Biological weapons that are, that are subject to flooding. Not much flooding, actually. But and we are we are a hundred percent sure of that because the stakes are high um, in terms of the potential for the building, right? So we're really no, sure. No, you'd have to check the FEMA maps. And they yeah. updated them. I haven't looked at them for years. Well, if that's the case, then the high school is, the town meeting, is, the town sure. hall is, the yeah. library is. Yeah, sure. No, the, the, the high school is, the, ball, the, the little field next to Russell is. Russell itself. I think. Alan, I can't hear you. Can you can you move forward or something? I think when, 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 when just kind of just kind of sure. I think it would be beneficial to take another take a look at Town Hall, the maps in Town Hall, the FEMA maps, and you can tell what they are. I'm pretty sure they're in the 500 year flood plan. Yeah, that's maybe partly the 100 year flood. I don't so, think Town Hall is okay. So a lot of properties are in various flood zones and might require flood insurance. That's very different than being land that's used for flood storage area and is covered on the, under the Wetlands Protection Act. So we get into an area of expertise that's not mine. What I do know is I have had experience where we roll along for years making assumptions about where there are wetlands or where there aren't wetlands without getting a wetland scientist on site. And it, it's a mistake because you wanna be really sure. It's, it's a driver in a building that this size that's gonna cost this much to save and renovate. The ability to use the surrounding land on that parcel is a huge, um, it's a huge issue um, for the usability of the property. So I just throw that out there. So for example, we are looking uh, right now at a school building. East Hampton has a request for proposals out right now. I just sent it to Courtney for three old elementary school buildings that they are determined. They've, they've done a lot of studies. They know they want to reuse them for affordable housing. In some of those cases, um, they're allowing people to demolish the buildings. They don't encourage it, but they're allowing it or add on to the buildings which becomes much more palatable when you're talking about an old kind of beloved structure in town. Um, so that is kind of, for me, a, a primary fork in the road, understanding, can you build, could you put an addition on that building? Could you put the land around it to other uses? Could, if you had a restaurant that came in and used it, could they put a parking lot there? Just understanding the potential of the whole site. Um, would be very important. When we look at affordable housing development, one of our main funding sources, it's called the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program. The minimum number of apartments to access that program is 20. And I don't think the Russell School can hold 20 units as it stands today. So it makes it very difficult to reuse it in that way. Whereas the Hatfield Center School was converted to market rate condominiums, and I believe there's only six apartments in that school building. So the economics change quite a bit if you're trying to do affordable housing or market rate housing. Excuse me. Um, I think that of the surveys that we've gotten so far, most want to preserve the building and many, many want to reuse the building for town use. Mm -hmm. Are you are you gonna talk about that? <laughs> no, I, I was brought in for having an expertise uh, okay. in the area of affordable housing. All righty. I think, I think what our guest is saying is that you could preserve the building by putting in housing, but you probably have to add, add an addition to it uh, to make it uh, feasible. And so the building could stand, uh, that's one possibility, but you'd have to have an addition. And the question right. is whether the land is buildable or not next to it. Right, and you know, I had understood that while there might be a desire to preserve the building for some kind of community use, the yeah. price tag was daunting. Yeah, um, for the community. And certainly if you're going to use it for any public use, I don't know, is there already an elevator in that building or is it? No. So, oh, one of the major expenses is you, 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 you 
add, add an elevator tower. Uh, it's not ADA right. accessible at all. Right. Yeah, it's, it's not accessible to any stretch of the imagination. That's the you know the main reason that the uh, you know the the North Star uh, relocated. You know, yeah. Yeah. You know, we had to end that lease because of liability issues. So you can even go. You can even enter the building because the steps are out of code. And you know it's causing you a liability issue that's just not worth it. You would you know right. lose the building in a lawsuit. It's it's cheaper to take the stairs down and rebuild them and you know bring them up to code. That's the cheapest insurance. Right. I mean the other use I've seen some communities make, and there have been a number of studies done. You you're not the first ones who've looked at kind of an old white elephant building in their town. Um, so uh, you know historic museum uses sometimes are compatible sometimes they'll end up just using the ground floor for public and then the upper stories for storage so they kind of try to get around that issue of having to install and maintain an elevator um i mean i think you're looking for the nexus of community desire and what you can finance um together and so for me, understanding the characteristic of the land around the site, because it has a lot of value. It's an awesome location. It's a prominent location. So it would attract commercial interest. You um, know, what I keep thinking about is we've got the town hall on one side and the school on the other and, and other town buildings across the street. Why would we want to have housing in that location? I can see it in North Hadley, uh, the school building is there. But why, right in the center of town would, and you know, my car was vandalized once right there at the stoplight by kids crossing the street, throwing rocks at my car. That will happen at, at housing there too. Well, happen to the library too. I'm sorry, I just can't that. see housing there. Well, that's uh, fine. I I'm not trying to sell you on housing. Um, I was um, just trying to explain that when communities convert old school buildings, one of the things they often do is housing because of the the ability to raise money uh, to save their building, um, and to kind of get out from <laughs> under the responsibility of a building that doesn't have any purpose and is looking like it needs a lot of repairs. So right now in Massachusetts, we are raising up to $500,000 per apartment for developing affordable housing. So it's significant resources. So I think it's, it's just one option to explore. It's not necessarily the right one for your building. Um, I think the survey is great. I think it has to be paired with kind of financial feasibility. And maybe in East Hampton, they're looking, they have some larger school buildings, but they're looking at a mix of housing and um, like one of the buildings has a gymnasium. So they wanna retain that for community use, for example. Um, I don't know if there are kind of prime areas in the Russell School like what would the community use it for is, is yeah. the question I that mean, I would have. The, 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 the issue that I keep pressing is that, you know, what you're gonna use it for at this point in this building's life is putting the cart before the horse. Right now, we need to concentrate on stabilizing the building so that it can be used. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, if you don't, if, if, you, if, you, if you keep blocking the wheels of progress, with what if or what can, then you really never get to, to actually save the building. It will deteriorate further and right. it will begin to rapidly deteriorate, you know, the, the longer time goes, the quicker it happens. So, and that's happened in a lot of communities where there's been, it, yeah, certainly yeah, Hatfield yeah. is a great case study because they spent, I don't know, 10, 15 years really kind of anguishing over wanting to save the center school, wanting it to be for some kind of public purpose, but unable to make the match and, and raise the resources. And um, meanwhile, the building every year significantly deteriorated. Um, 
there is what does that building look like it is 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 it as pretty as the russell school is it as significant and it's a very pretty old school building it's the russell school is special it's not as pretty yes, as the is. russell school See, that's the thing <laughs> <laughs> so um but they were able to preserve the character of that building mm -hmm. um and the front facade is unchanged the what the front facade of that um, building facade. is unchanged we so, the center school in Hatfield. Yeah. Okay. So I, I I sent Courtney a link because right now they're marketing units in it, and there's a lot of photographs you can just look at online of what the building looks like after this renovation was done, of what the units look like, of how much they're asking to sell them for. It's just a good comparable. You know, I think you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You can look at what other communities have done with their old buildings successfully and say, would we want to do that? Um, again, the in the case of uh, uh, the, the North Hadley Village Hall, uh, we were, we sold the building. Mm -hmm. Right. The town, the, the town had decided if we want to save it, we have to sell it. And, you know, with that, uh, the building was sold with historic preservation restrictions. Sure. Yep. And that type of activity is all eligible for CPA funds. Yep. If if the Russell School was sold to a developer to make housing, yeah, they are eligible for those CPA funds. It's actually more eligible. So, right. so they would most likely be applying for you know for CPA to get yeah. a bunch of the exterior work done. Yeah. Now, I told Ricky and Joe up in North Hadley Village Hall, I said, you know, I appreciate you bought this building and I'm glad that you can save it. The town is lucky that you guys got it. And I know that you're gonna be wanting to approach the town for CPA funds. And I said, you know, try to hold off on applying for those funds because we have Russell School to deal with. Mm -hmm. And if you apply for CPA funds for, to fix up the North Hadley Village Hall, I will vote for that. So I, you know, I, I I won't take away from one building to give to another in town. They're all eligible for CPA funds. Sure. And CPA has been used for a lot of things in this town that are marginally, just marginally acceptable uses for CPA money. Mm -hmm. And that's okay with me. I'm glad that the town is using the CPA the way it should be used. It's a fund that can be used as taxes. And the, the citizens of this town have been afforded this device to say what their taxes can be used for. It's a critical tool in community preservation. Yep. Yes. If, I, if, I could, if I could understand what our guest from the Valley CDC is telling us, the key point here to me, we all know that there's many, many things that are possible. They may not be feasible. They may not work. All these things, museums, housing, all these things. We've looked at all these examples. We know, I know we have all the reports from center school. Right here. But, but we're asking CDC as a nonprofit um, enabler of housing. What I'm hearing is that not put, put market rate housing apart on the side. That's a, that's a completely different thing. You could do market rate housing in a small building like they're doing in the center school. But for affordable housing, subsidized by various grants, what I'm hearing is you need at least 20 units. Yeah. Is that, was I that's, in the right? Yes. And, and, if you, and if you need 20 units, Russell can't accommodate 20 units without any addition. Major addition. Yeah. Okay. That, that's a takeaway for me. Well, yeah, from yeah, affordable housing right. in that, you know, in this, you know, affordable housing in the center of town here somewhere, that's fine. Yeah. You know, if we're to redevelop the dilapidated the data barns over there on, on Railroad Street and make it affordable housing, that's fine with me. I live in this neighborhood. Well, I don't care. Well, 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 whatever yeah. whatever option is put forward, if it's a if it's just use the building for something, whether it's town, town use or market rate or whatever. Obviously the, you know, the town, quote unquote, and all the boards, the planning boards and select board and all the people who have jurisdiction would have to, you know, approve it, buy into it, uh, work out something. So it's not, nothing's a done deal. It's just what's feasible. And uh, 
Um, so we, you know, when we put together our final advice report recommendations, we will need to point out that we got as well the town wants more affordable housing or wants it there. If you did want to pursue it, it is what you need to do. Right. So the, the other example that's, I think, very uh, comparable is the um, East Street School in Amherst. So again, the town, by the, a, by the same town. I'm very familiar with Amherst. So what I know CDC did a great job in South Amherst. Great. So what's, what's similar about it is that it's a small, old school building that sat vacant for many years because the town wasn't quite sure how they could reuse it. And eventually they actually added another parcel. They bought another piece of land and they put out a request for proposal for developers so that they could get the scale that was attractive and needed to get feasibility for affordable housing. They really wanted to do affordable housing. It doesn't mean you have to, but yeah. that's an example of a town that overcame the small size of their building um, by allowing a new building to be built next to it and adding another parcel to yeah. it. It's so right that, next to other affordable housing. It's not next to town hall. So I don't think Amherst I, would ever, ever want a, a building in the center of town to be converted to housing. Having lived there for almost 50 years, I can tell you that. <laughs> but the though, South even Amherst- though there's, Even though there's residential housing up and down- It's really West done. Street. Um, Alan, I was talking, I said the South Hammer CDC project, which took forever to approve, was is excellently done. My my problem, North Amherst, if they want if you wanted to use CDC funds for that, that's great. My problem is this wonderful, wonderful building right in the center of town. It's not appropriate for Affordable housing. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, your, that's your opinion. I think it's a town decision. I'm not. I'm not advocating it either. I'm. I'm looking for what is possible. Yeah. We have to look at the. You know, if there's five, ten, fifteen possibilities, let's look at it and see if they're reasonable or not. And then other people will decide whether they want it. That's fair enough. We're trying to narrow down the options. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Laura, for that. Yes. Very helpful. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> of course. Why don't you look into North Am Hadley? Of course, the, the owner would have to. So I, I just wanted to clarify well, that, there, there that there is a committee. There is a committee in town looking at affordable housing, I believe. I'm sure I'm talking true. about So I, I'm here because Courtney reached out to me, <laughs> um, <laughs> not because I'm trying to promote the idea of affordable housing exactly. at the Russell School. I'm actually mm -hmm. telling you why, if you wanted to do that, it would be challenging and it would require making a larger building. Um, you. We're just here to give you information about our industry. We're not champing after the Russell School. I think it's a tough nut to crack, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. So... And I wish you well, because I think it's a, a lovely building in a, an awesome location, but it's I've watched many towns go through this struggle of finding enough resources to save these old school buildings. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, a lot. Thanks so much. Yeah, take care, have a good night. Thank you. Okay, so I also reached out to uh, Mass Development. <clears throat> So that we would not be eligible for the Common, Commonwealth Places Program. The what? The Commonwealth Places Program. We would not be eligible. What program? Commonwealth Places. Spaces. Places. 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 Okay, got it. Courtney, could somebody else say what you just said? Because I can't hear you. You reached out to who? Mass, Mass Development. Okay. And who else? I, I haven't gotten there yet. I'm sorry. Oh, All right, I'm going to move. It's always going to be dead before this meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, Carolyn, can you hear me better here? Yes, thank you. Yeah. So, so I reached out to Mass. 
Yeah. And they have a Commonwealth Places program. We are not eligible for it. Oh. <laughs> um, they said that we could submit an expression of interest through the Massachusetts Community One Stop for Growth program, which I know we've discussed before at one of these meetings. Um, and folks can start applying at the beginning of December. That's as far as I've gotten there. Um, and I also spoke with uh, Ross from the Mass Historical Commission. Um, he says that we are eligible for the MPPF program, which is Massachusetts Preservation Projects Fund. Um, and the application is due March 17th. However, it's a very uh, challenging grant to receive. Um, it requires a lot of information. Um, and it's only like $80,000. What was it? What was it? What was it? 80? Yeah. 83, is that what you said? 80. Oh, okay. Um, and then I spoke with Denise Barstow Manns, um, who is the CPA rep for the Historical Commission. Um, and she said applications for CPA are February 1st. <laughs> um, and the meetings um, uh, for reviewing are February 13th and 27th. And she asked that we have a representative from the committee join those meetings. Oh, on that subject, if I may. Yeah. Because I talked I talk to Mary Sayer, um, she's on the cemetery committee with me. She's the chairman of the, mm -hmm. of that. I uh, think she mentioned that February 4th date as well. Mm -hmm. But um, <clears throat> in, in view of the fact that the schools have uh, been approved for a rather large uh, grant this year, mm -hmm. this Town meeting for the ball fields. Yeah. Over a million dollars, I think it is. And they they are um, decided in the town meeting approved bonding for that, which is another technique of spreading out the money and getting using more CPA money. Um, <clears throat> we have to be, we have to get uh, up to speed on what that means for another bonding possibility if we propose to do that with Russell next spring. So we need to talk to Mary. Okay. She needs to give us a um, give us the uh, give, you know give us what the rules of the road are and what the limitations might be for doing another bonding uh, thing simultaneously with the school CPA bond. We also probably need to talk to Linda about Linda Sanders, who's the uh, town treasurer, because she is the one who processes and uh, knows all about bonding and what it means. Okay. So at some point before we get serious about putting together a CPA package for, for springtime meeting involving stabilization, I presume, um, we need to get educated on what the cons possible constraints might be on using uh, CPA money via bonding. Alan, who, who is this Mary? What's her name? Mary what? Mary Thayer. Oh, Mary Thayer. Oh, you know her. Yeah. Um, so I think we should either invite her to a meeting, and we've got to do this before we get it too deep oh, into January, mm -hmm. or, or just have somebody go talk to her and bring, yeah. back, bring back information. Well, of course, uh, our, our package is different than school. We're in historical, um, so <laughs> but from, from your question is about going out to debt. It's not a question of whether it's historic or open space. It's a question of how much money can CPA bond in a given period of time, okay? Or can they give? I mean, they have a lot of money. They're, they're sitting on a lot of money, but it's they a are. finite amount. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to Mary if you'd like. Uh, Courtney, would you want me to do that or do you want to do it? Um, I'm happy to pass that on to somebody. <laughs> or does somebody yeah, else want to talk? I don't mind talking to her. I'm, I, I'm familiar. I mean, we, we just 
I was at a couple of CPA meetings uh, probably two years ago when this when they first decided it might be a good idea to start, you know, bonding, you know, an essential borrowing against CPA, yeah. you yeah. know, future CPA revenue. Right. Uh, yeah. So yeah. you don't deplete your whole lot. So, right. I mean, right. that, you know, basically that's it, but I don't mind having a meeting with her. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. And she'd, and she'd be happy to talk to me, I know. And to know what she knows. Um, okay. Okay. On this, on that, on that mass um, preservation projects fund, the MTPF. Yeah. I actually started to do that a couple of years ago for Russell, uh, and I have the application package, and it is daunting to yeah. say the least uh, for for the amount of money. But I would still do it if we do proceed with CPA because uh, actually they require. CPA match mm -hmm. or, or not match, but uh, reimbursement. Yeah, that's they have they want you to apply the CPA as well as that. Right. So um, it might be worth it if that's the only way we can get uh, some money to do something. With obviously eighty thousand dollars is going to cover a lot of the bill, but it might get us some start. Well, certainly, that that's going to pay for a good chunk of that work, right. without a doubt. Yeah. yeah. Some so and what, we, what was the deadline? Uh, uh, March 17th. So the timing is good. You know, when I brought this up before about requiring, I was shot down like crazy by you guys. It's they don't always require a match. And well, it, well, I was going to shot me down on that. Well, so. I, was gonna, I don't remember shooting down, Carolyn. In fact, I was going to suggest tonight. I was going to suggest tonight since you mentioned that you are a good grant writer. That you could take a crack at that MPPF uh, yeah. thing for us. Yeah, the, I mean, the person I spoke with there said that we need to match what they give. Who did you speak to? <laughs> well, they match or not, we might want to apply for the money anyway. Yeah, but they're, yeah they're I think so. That's 160, right? right. If, they're, if, if the available, the total available amount is 80. And we match that, it's 160. That's, yeah, right. that's a lot yeah. of money to do a lot of work on that building. Yeah, and I'm, you know, we may not be able to get the 1.2 to $2 million for the all the stabilization things, but we could get I something. Would, I, actually, I don't think I'd ask the town to, mm -hmm. to do all the stabilization at once. You know, it's going to yeah. take a lot of, of cooperation and coordination between different contractors, right. and it's going to take a lot of money. And if you yeah. spend all your money in one day, um, well, that, and that kind of that kind of goes into another suggestion I, I have is is that we is that some of us sit down and go through our laundry list of stabilization items which we already have five or six things mm -hmm. and really hone it and prioritize it right. and say okay this is the first thing we should do this is the second thing we should do let's, let's um, you know bring the numbers up refine them as much as we can. And then see where it fits into uh, possible CPA, mm -hmm. MPPF, anything else we can find out yeah. there. So we might be talking about a couple hundred thousand dollars instead of two million, uh, if that's what if that's what it shakes out. And that's I think doable. Yeah. It might be worth pursuing, uh, and we can put that together before February first. But I think it's important that we sit down. I don't know. I know you. I know you, you can do it. I've been willing to do it. We should sit down and go through all this. We've got a ton of information. Yeah, we've got all kinds of information. It's a question of, you know, packaging it up and deciding which, what are we going to do first? Is that something you could take a crack at, a first crack at? Well, I, I, I only do it if uh, Dan agrees to sit down with me. Yeah, I'm happy to, you okay. know, that, you know that, 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 and invite as many other people as we can who may be interested or, or helpful. And, and, and the municipal, municipal building committee, which hasn't met for I don't know how long, but we're both, Dan and I are both members of that. And there's people on that board who have been thinking about Russell and working on Russell for years and years and years. I think it would be who of us, once we've kind of got our thoughts together and, and our recommendations is to sit down with the municipal building committee or at least some members of that and pick their brains and see what they think and would they support whatever we come up with. Because I think it would be important 
There's two, there's two boards in this town that we would need support. Two both, two CPA board. Actually, three. The first one is the select board. The third, second one is the municipal building committee. And the third one is the historical commission. So at some point between now and February, if we're serious about pushing forward anything, once we talk to them every day or find out what the, you know, what we can do, what, what we in practical terms can do, we should sit down with those three and, and bounce things off them and see what, what they say and would they support one thing or the other. Or, so again, that would have to be done before February 1st. Yeah, I'm not sure we can get that. Yeah, okay, so just as far as things like when I can do this. Next. Does, does that sound like a plan? Like yeah, that sounds great. So I Dan, Dan and I will work on the, on the, on the stabilization list. Yeah, love it. Uh, Carolyn's gonna work on the grant, uh, is that, did, did Carolyn agree to that? I, I couldn't hear a word you were going on about. Uh, I don't know what uh, you're talking about. The, the, grants? the, 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 the grant. The Massachusetts Preservation Projects Fund grant application is due March in March. Would you like to get started on that? Would you like to take a look at, at Wait that? Wait a minute. Say it again, please. Mass what? Mass Preservation Projects Fund, MBPF. Okay, I won't be able to do a thing until January because I've got, um, I'm yeah, that, on. That, yeah, that's okay, but Carolyn, because another, I think it's still a the deadline in, in December. <laughs> yeah, that, that's fine because I think the deadline, somebody mentioned it, is March 13th? 17th, yeah. 17th, so it's not due till March. Okay, I'll look into it. Mass okay. Preservation Project Fund. Yeah, I can send you the link, Carolyn. Thank you. There's an, there's an application form and a, and a guidebook and everything else yeah. that you can get copies of. Great. Okay. And then somebody's going to talk to Mary Sayer. That was you, Dan? Yeah. I'd yeah. rather talk to Mayor Sayer. <laughs> well, you can talk to her too. Yeah, you can. You That's certainly it. can approach her. No, no, no. I'll do this other. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Okay, so back to the top of the agenda forum review. Um, is there anything we want to chat about? Uh, with the forum. Um, well, I thought it went very well. Yeah. We had to go to nice. I don't know if you guys saw that Gazette article. It was a big long article in the Gazette. Well, there were actually two articles, one in the Gazette and one in this thing called the, the Minder, I think, or the Reminder. Yeah, but the, got, yeah the Gazette guy wrote it, Scott Merzbeck. I didn't read the Gazette one. I've well, I have it here. I, I think they were good. I grow to not trust them. Yeah, no, I, I thought both articles were straightforward and, and, and content, you know, information. Uh, yeah. I, I always said one thing I came away from the forum it was uh, uh, was it Denise or was it uh, somebody from the historical commission? Maybe it was Mabel, uh, not me. Diana. Dr. Diana said that we should, again, this is something we need to talk to Linda Sanderson about, but what would be the implications if the town um, put, put, put the, not the CPA, but the, the town budget. Yeah. Uh, How would it affect we, taxes? Yeah, if the town was going to put some money into it, whatever reason, um, you know, to, for town use, what would, it, what would the actual implication be for? I don't know, a $10 million or a $5 million or, or a $2 million package, how, how would that affect the tax rate, uh, the bonding, all that stuff? Yeah. Because that's always the first question you ask anyway. But she might, she might be able to help us understand the implications of doing that. I think that, and, and, and basically she was saying we should, we should at least ask the question, you know, not necessarily saying we want to do it, but if, if the town said, yeah, okay, let's use it for uh, some, some town use. Right. Uh, for instance, if we were to spend $10 million, what would our tax increase be? Exactly. That's, that's the basic question. Yeah, basic so that's question. on my list. So that's not always accurate. You know, yeah. not, not always accurately forecast. Yeah, and that also depends on what else the town is going to be. Right. And what, and, and I, I can't hear you guys. So. Sorry. 
Um, are you asking if it goes, uh, it, right now it's tax exempt. If it becomes housing, it goes off the exempt status. Is that what you're talking about? Oh. And therefore the town could get taxes from, that's no, not. No, no, that's true. What you're saying is true, but what would- what the, I don't the, know what you're talking about then. Well, what, what we're talking about is what Diana West suggested we do, which is to talk to, talk to the town treasurer about the implications of uh, the town uh, um, uh, passing a bond or whatever, you know, approving funding, which would have to be bonded through the, through the taxes, through tax dollars, not CPA, uh, for spending money directly on that building. Um, she said we just should know, even if we're not going to push that idea or if it doesn't go anywhere, we should at least know uh, what the cost of the town would be in terms of increased tax. Okay, you keep saying bond, but... Well, that's how the town raises borrowing. money. They go out for borrowing. Borrowing, exactly. Borrowing is another... They're borrowing is, is a better term. And an interest rate. So how much would that be? It's right now the borrowing rate is around 7%, even for municipal stuff. Yeah, exactly, it's not attractive. So, um, it, what Denise was wanting to know was, well, you'd have to go through a town meeting for this. And I don't- said, Of course, but before you go to town meeting, you get your ducks lined up. And one of the ducks is lined up is how much would it be? And you, and you get that information from the town treasurer. Yeah. That's all she's saying. She wasn't saying we should do it. Um, it's just that if we're exploring various funding possibilities, I think yeah. we're, we're trying to concentrate on, you know, money that could come into the town versus the town spending it. But we should also look at what would it be if the town spent the money. Okay. Or borrow the money. Borrow the money. Okay. Got it. Any, anything else on the forum? Yeah, this, oh, no, that's the wrong, sorry. sorry. Okay. Anything else, anybody else wants to say? Before? Well, Alan, you went and talked to that guy that- He's sitting, he's sitting right here. He, uh, Mr. Kowalik, right? Do I have any last name? I want to say Kowalik. Kowalik. Okay, sorry. I know Greg. Greg. Yeah. What, Greg, what did he say? We chatted about the problem that they had in Southampton, where I think you were a selectman or- yes. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to explain yourself? I mean, that was that one. Ma'am, what's your question? Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to know what uh, what the conversation was after the forum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I thank you for coming, and we had a pleasant yeah, conversation. It, was, it wasn't a, an interrogation. It, <laughs> you know, it was just because. Uh, like I, I've gone through this in Southampton and we were successful, but uh, we saved the, the building and remodeled the inside. But it's, it's a very small, it's a much smaller structure than this. So it wasn't that difficult. And it's, it is a lot more modern than this building. Yeah. Oh, it, it was, I think it was a Grange Hall. No, the Grange Hall, that, that was another case of how do we reuse the building? And uh, the Grange Hall ended up getting bulldozed. Okay, so, so you had one good, one success and one not well, so good. Yeah, well, the Grange Hall was prior. Oh, okay. And they could not, uh, you know, this is being a private building, it was all up to them. Mm -hmm. And they could not successfully raise any money to do anything with it. Uh, so it just got. Uh, what, what, what was the other building? <laughs> the other building was uh, previously known as the Larrabee School. Oh. And it was uh, a uh, grammar school. And in Southampton, they built a new grammar school and then uh, added on to it. So the Larrabee School became surplus, and the uh, town offices moved over to there after the building. The interior of the building was renovated. 
And how did you get, how did you get funding for that? Uh, I wasn't involved in, in that. Uh, that was, uh, yeah, I do not know how we got funding for that, but uh, I don't think it was millions of dollars. I think it was, you know, maybe a million or so. Yeah, well, how, how long ago was this, you know? Uh, Mid 90s. Okay. What, I, I'm sorry, what, what year? The mid nineties. Ah, so twenty years ago, thirty years ago. Practically, yes. Maybe you know, maybe twenty. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Time flies. Yeah. Oh dear, I'm so glad. So yeah. was that, that that project was successful. Yes. And it, it was it was it. advantageous for the town at the time well yeah. it continues to be or is it no longer no, it's well we moved out of Southampton obviously uh, it was something that had to happen because the old I call the old town hall where all the town offices were located uh, the rooms were eight by ten and ten by twelve and was just couldn't do it. Did they completely move out of town hall? Or did they just add it? Uh, the police department took it over. Oh, okay. Uh, so they kept both buildings, but they just repurposed them. Correct. Which is kind of what you know we'd like to they do. They tried to. Uh, <laughs> they there was the, the Southampton also needed a live new library, uh, and we looked into using the old town hall as a library, but. Uh, Architecturally, the, the floors could not support yeah. the books. Same problem we have with Russell when we looked at that for the library. So, Southampton built a new library and sold the old library to a private concern who runs a book business out of the old library. Nice. Oh, that's a nice deal. Win win win. Okay. Um, yeah. So, but I mean, that. Uh, the Southampton, the old library was, I mean, I had more, more space in my house than they had in the library. <laughs> uh, now, uh, so that's how that's basically what we were, that's what we were chatting about. about. Yeah. You know, and I, uh, I taught in the center school in Hatfield, so I know what that building looked like. Uh, in 1975, uh, and I do know the developer, Mr. Barry Roberts, and uh, there were some challenges and there was a lot of money spent, and that's one reason the market value for those condos is what it is. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not easy to take a, you know, a classroom and turn it into condominiums because of, you know, uh, mm -hmm. certain things. I also grew up in East Hampton, so I'm familiar with Maple School is yeah. one of the buildings I went through. I, I K through <coughs> K through six at Maple School. Uh, my wife taught at Center School, which is the second building, and I attended the it used to be the old high school, it's called the Pepin School. school yeah. And they are going to face some really stiff challenges. Yeah. yeah. In all three buildings, because they're the old high school was built in the 30s with Bruce, uh, Franklin Roosevelt's CPA program, uh, Make Work. Oh, the WPA. WPA, yeah. sorry, WPA. Yeah. Uh, Center School, Center School, Maple School go back to the turn of the century. Mm -hmm. uh, but they were your typical schools, square buildings, square rooms, hallway. Yeah. And, and that's it. That's that was you know, basically what we chatted about last uh, after last meeting at the forum. 
Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so upcoming deadlines. We talked about CPA and some of the other funding um, opportunities. Um, town meeting tends to be mid-April, right? Uh, May. Mid-May. I don't think they said a date, but it'll probably. Yeah, I, didn't, I couldn't find a date either. Are there any other deadlines that we need to keep yeah, in mind? Yeah, we got to think of the survey deadline. The survey deadline? Yeah, the survey deadline is January 5th. Okay? Correct. But I, I would right, recommend. What deadline? What? what deadline? Survey. Survey. Oh, I thought you said Surrey. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, um, okay. I think what we should do is uh, reach out to Allison, who's our consult, consultant yeah. helper on that, and uh, see what she thinks about starting to enter the paper ones. We have about 20 of them, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, it'd be nice if we get those in. Uh, she may want to wait till after the 5th, but if she can start doing it now, that would be lovely. Uh, because I've been carrying around a bunch of them, and I don't know if anybody else has got some. And I know there's a couple more floating around, but we should get them in a package and get them to her uh, as soon as she can be willing to take them. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to lose them if I keep carrying them around. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, I'd like to, you know, so I'd like to get that. I could actually, uh, Alice is on the book. Library board with me, so I could ask her. If you okay. Want, unless you feel like doing it. Okay. No, I'll, I'll right. ask her. Um, and then uh, we want, you know, we're going to find out from her because I don't know how the survey monkey works. What kind of how do they how they slice and dice the results? I mean, we know generally speaking mm -hmm. what it's starting to look like. Yeah. But I, you know, for instance, uh, are we going to be able to tell uh, break out the resident the people who just Residents and what their responses were, yeah, or not, right? Okay, well, did we have any non residents? No, about uh 15 percent, I think. Really? Uh, as of the uh, current count, no, I didn't know of any. Well, that's because you haven't seen all the, all the surveys. I thought there was one or two. No, we're talking about 508 uh to, to date. How many are non residents? Yeah, so 11 percent are former Headley residents. Um, seven percent are Hadley residents but work in town, and three point seven five percent um, don't have an affiliation work or they don't no, live or residents. work here. So yeah, three percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's not that's not that's not a huge amount. No, mm -hmm. it's not a huge amount. But it'd be interesting to see if, if that group has a different, generally speaking, yeah, different. Um, level of support for the different okay. options. Yeah. But, but, but Alice is going to do that for us when she, I, I hope, or the survey monkey itself will do it. Uh, and we should find out exactly what we're going to get for, for, for a report from them. Okay. And then we can, we'll, we should get that hopefully in the beginning of January because we're going to want to digest it, you know, quickly so we can do yeah. yeah. that. Alan, how many surveys do you have? Paper surveys? I, I have 15. 15. 15. Yeah. And Alan, I mean, um, anybody yeah. else have any? Dan Actually, has two. Yeah, there's a couple still over at the senior center and in the library and maybe town halls. So I'm guess I'm predicting we'll have around 20 to 30 paper oh, surveys. Well, but yeah, okay, so paper surveys. All right. And we have five. How many did you say, uh, Courtney? How many? So far? I don't have any. I don't have it. Oh, um, electronically? It's yeah. 500 and something. 512. Yeah. Which is excellent, by the way. Really, really good. Yeah. So it's a better response rate than any survey that I've seen recently in the town. That's, and that's, that's a, it's a good number. But, yeah. you know, more than, more than, more is better, but I think we're in good shape with 500. To, yeah. to, to I say. just don't like to see it. Yeah. Oh, the school kids. I'd still like to see if we can get uh, yeah. paper copies from the school kids, yeah. and we can certainly oh. be easy to to divide from the rest of the people, knowing that they're minors and won't be voting. But it's nice to know yeah. sure, what the, sure. what the kids, the, you know, the, the stakeholders in the town. The, yeah, I mean, again, but how, how are we asked, doing that? Uh, uh, have we approached the school? Or? I have. I have not officially yet. Um, I, you know, I've said. Well, I said I mean, to, to, you can just uh, put it. Annie, 
Yeah, and, who, who would we do? Annie, Annie, Annie? I, I would talk to Annie, I would talk to Nicole Caluso. Yeah. Um, and find out if Hopkins. Just, yeah. Hopkins. Hopkins. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we could just do the same thing we did here. Put a box out there. I, I don't see what the what what the. Okay. That'd be good. If we get if we get thirty or forty of them, that would be wonderful. Know. Yeah. Okay. You're in charge of that. Okay. <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea. Why is that? Because it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, yes, they live here. Uh, they may be stakeholders, they may not be stakeholders. They may move out of town. Sure. Yeah. Okay. But, but B, the, how, what experiences other than maybe aren't going through that building? But I don't think there's any current students at Hopkins Academy. No, there. no. Now that I remember, no. Oh. So the, you know, so it makes you wonder. They, you know, yeah. but they, but they, they may, they may appreciate the building for its uh, aesthetic value. I, I know that some of the kids in that school are related to the original building committee members. Yeah, that's, and that's, I'm sure that's going to switch. But it, again, they're not voting. You know, it's just a You know, this percentage of people had this opinion. They're all minors. They live in town. I mean, just, just the. Yeah, we can. I mean, we're, we're going to break it out because I mean, you know, we're going to break out to right because we're asking people, you know, are you a resident? Are you, are you, did you go to Russell? So we can break out the results by those groups, okay? Also by age, mm -hmm. okay? So that'll it'll qualify. They won't just get lumped in with everybody else. So will their uh, points of view migrate over into the? Rest of the stars. Who knows? I mean, it's, you know. I know that when I when I was in school in Hadley when I was a kid, they asked me if I wanted to be part of Hadley Long Range Planning Committee, and I was just a kid. You know, what am I going to do as a kid? And now here we are, forty mm -hmm. some odd years later, and I'm kicking myself in the butt for not getting involved in Hadley Long Range Planning when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> if, not, if nothing else, it might be a way to engage them in sure. town things, town issues. You know, and people who don't future. have an opinion just won't fill it out, right? I don't think it can hurt. I, have I, don't think it's gonna, I don't think it's going to skew the results at all. Not, not with 500, we'll probably get 20. I have yes. a question. Um, you guys were there, uh, and there was this uh, lovely woman sitting in the front. I think she said her name was Beth. And yep. she asked about coming to our next meeting. Um, obviously, she's not here or with you. Um, does anybody remember her name? Beth Karish or Beth Szymanski? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Beth? No, it is because Dan went to school with her. Yeah. Her then baby. Beth Karras? Yeah. Szymanski. She lives on... Uh, K I E R A S. Do you think we should invite her because she wanted to come to a meeting? Do you know who knows her? I don't even know her. <laughs> she's. I mean, she's on. She's on the email list. So she on our list. And she wrote. She wrote down. Yeah. I mean, she wrote down the date for the meeting. So okay. Just, just another thing on the survey, I was just thinking, I just uh, remembered another thing we're going to want to do that I don't think Survey Monkey can do is that's a statistical analysis of, you know, of the things that people filled out. Yeah. But there is a, on the survey, there was a question do you have any other thoughts or ideas? Yeah. Do you want to? We have to so have some way of retrieving those. Yeah, so Allison is putting that all together for she us. do that. Yeah, sure. and she's putting together like a visual word cloud. Okay. as well um great okay yeah i'll be way ahead of me okay good so <laughs> as long as somebody's taking care of that yeah it'll be very useful to hear hear all those yeah. specific comments yeah great um and then also about the survey i just want to make sure that we we go around to everywhere that the um that we posted it and sort of just remove the bottom half because that has an outdated forum date well okay well you think that's necessary yeah, the posters that I put up didn't count. So 
Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah I think most of them. So are. if I go to a place that we posted, I will remove it. Otherwise, I won't worry about it. Okay, yeah. You just fold it. So only, yeah, oh, that's right. We did it, we did it more than we did it more. Uh, we put it in uh, the poster, the poster, not just the servers. The posters that like bar stores. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 No, no servers, but the poster. Okay, yeah. Great. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, historical commission, the Hadley Historical Commission video. So before this Russell School Committee was created, um, the Historical Commission was planning on putting together some sort of a video um, interviewing people who attended or who grew up here um, to um, sort of preserve the, um, the history of the building. Um, yes. So we as the historical commissioners gonna continue with that and Alex is on track to help us create a video. Um, so it's separate from us, but we of course will, you know, yeah. bring it back to, to this table here to um, to review. Um, and then it'll also be beneficial for us if we're eventually looking for funding, we can use that yeah. video. Yeah. So. Or if we lose the building, we'll have a-, we'll have a you know, Exactly. Which yep. is what we did with Hooker. Yep. Um, did you have a time table for that? No. Okay. Do you, I brought it, you know, but I brought the historical society's folder Great. on Russell. Yeah. Some of these things I'm going to put in the library, local history room, mm -hmm. in our little um, display cabinet. But if you want to use some of those photos for, you know, like the, yeah. you have the interviews with people who went there, but you also may want to yeah. show over the years. So you, you can make, I can scan whatever you want. That would be awesome. And, Thank uh, you. Yeah. I know I have some of those from one of my past. And I think I did send you some anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's like an FYI. Um, okay. So new business comments, thoughts. Okay. Yeah. That woman that was Laura. Laura. She brought up a, I think something that needs to be addressed okay just for information's sake and that is the the wetlands yeah you know, yeah yeah yeah, we, uh, yeah. Know, uh, uh, i can check on that okay i, I think there's a conservation agent in town hall who does i mean we could actually ask for determination of applicability uh, but I think informally we can find out as well. I think it needs to be a formal. Well, if we. It if, makes it easier if there's a conservation commission here to approach them and get something official. Yeah. Yeah. Because that could be the, the stake in the heart of the. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. if we're talking about additions or we put something out there, yes. Yeah. I'm pretty sure when. You know, we we went through all of those exercises with the municipal buildings yeah. committee over the years. You know, since 2014 till COVID, we did a bunch of research, and that's where we ended up with the determination that it's compensatory storage, and it's it's clearly defined as such on the FEMA maps. We just have to update the you know get the updated maps and make sure that we know where the correct. Is. I think that, that you folks as a committee. Should have something. But it, it, it should, but on yeah, that totally. topic, and I can speak with some authority since I used to be the wetlands administrator for the state for the oh. region. Um, although that was many, many, many years ago, and the laws have changed a yes. little bit. But the way the Wetlands Act works, it's not a prohibition on doing something, although it might be from a practical point of view. But you, depending on what kind of uh, jurisdiction there is, whether it's within 50 feet or if it's in a, a, a you know a swamp or a, a wet meadow or a floodplain, there are different requirements. That you, oops, you have to jump through. Right. Some of which are they're going to kill the project, but others are not that onerous. Well, just, yeah, as a community, you still need to get those. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. I, I don't think we should offer it in the substance that oh, if it's floodplain, we can't do anything no. in there. Yeah. That, that's no, the restrictions are such that, I mean, if you look at, say, the Mill Valley Road complex, it's right on the corner of Mill Valley and Nine. Yeah. You drive into that parking lot, it's a very narrow parking lot, it's hard to get in, hard to get out, or, and there's a big retaining wall. 
Uh, that had they had the junk too. They had to pay all kinds of money for engineering to have that retaining wall built so that it's up and out of the swamp. That does. I mean, it's sort of a that tells you that that building shouldn't be there for one. <laughs> and you certainly could put it there if you built, you know, a half a million dollar retaining retaining wall with drainage and swales and holding ponds and all kinds of stuff. You can do it if you, you know. Yeah, you want to pay some engineering and, and yeah. Yeah. just ask you know, it adds to the cost. It adds to the cost, and that's and it's, you know it's, it, it, I don't I don't know if, if that mm -hmm. particular field would be useful for anything other than parking. Yeah, as a practical. I, I have a that. question. Um, you know the the playing field at the high school is wet, and there's like a stream over there. Is there an underground stream like that crosses Route Nine or something? Where there, is, there, is, there is a there is actually good yes. point. There is a drainage um, easement right right in the middle of that ball field. Yeah, and it uh, carries I believe it's stormwater from Route Nine. But I'm and, thinking about the Russell School building. Is is uh, is there? That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, say it again. The, the field next to the Russell School, the, little, the low field that used to be used for softball. Okay, that's the that's part of that's part of the Russell property. Um, oh. that, okay, that's part of the one point eight seven acres that the yeah yeah okay. And uh, in, in under the ground, there's a storm drain and an easement, so you couldn't, for instance, you could not. Uh, you couldn't mess with that. You couldn't dig it up and, re and remove it. Um, you could put put a parking lot over it. Yeah, you could do that. But yeah, you wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want to be digging a foundation unless you had to move it. I think that you need to do that because if one of the options is to lease it or sell it to anyone, yeah, they you know you need to know that hey, we can sell oh. that or you know we can't sell it and then. That would determine a lot of yep. answers to questions. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's so many questions, that would, there's so many hoops that would have to be jumped through for any option. Yeah. Um, even demolition isn't just like, oh, yeah, we'll just do it. You know, this, you have to figure out what has its waste, abatement, and, yeah. you know, so um, uh, Focusing in on a couple of options and pursuing them doesn't mean they're going to happen. But even if it's compens compens compensatory flood storage, whatever you decide to do with the it, the building, who you know, you got to be up front saying, "Hey, right. oh sure, yeah, you know, yeah." Well, that, yeah, full disclosure. Right. Full yeah. Dis yes, yeah. full disclosure yeah. to whoever. Is interested in whatever yep. one of the five options or whatever yep. comes into play. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's right. Uh, I'm pretty sure that a bunch of people who know about this type of thing, they all realize that they really can't sell that. But the best caretakers of that property is town because we always have, you know, access to that easement for that drain pipe. And we always, you know, We'll always have that road that goes to Hopkins Academy. Right. They basically, the type, you know, my opinion, I'm sure there's a lot of who agree. That. And, and there's, a couple of, there's a couple of other issues that would have to be resolved. We, we, we mentioned them, we're upfront about them in, the, in our write ups and stuff. And that is parking, okay? What would be the parking requirements for whatever use is there? And, and, and more, perhaps more germane, is the fact that the town now uses. Yeah. Part of the property we're parking right now, the town hall. Yes. And there's a and there's a proposal that NBC was was uh, was advocating that they expand that parking lot or redesign yeah. it. And so it, it all you know we have we already have blueprints and plans exactly. for much of that. Uh, and you know not that any of those specs went out to bid. No, but it's still it's an not idea. Out because we're in the middle of building some new buildings. Right, right, right. It, there's no appetite. But at some at some apart. point, when, if the building stays. And is used for something that has to be brought back into the into the discussion right. about shared space, so to speak. And right. the last thing is the access road to Hopkins. 
the access road from Middle Street, that, that's sort of the back door, back door to Hopkins, that's on the Russell parcel, okay? So the town would have to retain an easement for the road. So it's not a, it's not a kill, it's not a, a, a um, was a fatal issue, but it's not something we can ignore. We have to be, we have to be upfront with that. And with anybody who comes in, if it's not the town, uh, that that would have to be uh, worked out. Yeah. So. Wow, I think it would really be hard to. Hey, if this was an easy, be useful for anything. Well, if this was if, if this was an easy uh, problem to solve, it would have been solved yeah. by now. Well, we're just trying to keep, advance the ball instead of kick the can down the um, Any other comments or new business to discuss? No, except that I really would like uh, the historical, what Dan said at, at the uh, forum. Dan, yeah. you had notes on that, right? Yeah, I got a whole thing. I'll just keep there. You send it so that yeah. it can be part of the record? Okay. I will. I will. Okay. Okay. So next, next meeting. Um, so two weeks out is the twelfth, which I cannot do. Um, so I'm hoping we could do the nineteenth instead. What was that? December nineteenth for the next meeting. Oh. Okay. Well, huh? Before the holiday. No, I'm thinking. I'm thinking after the holidays. Oh, that we don't have to meet until then. Uh, well, it's up to you guys. But I mean, we should meet before because we we definitely need to get together and run a bunch of the numbers Sorry. and stuff. Okay. So okay. We can certainly get together just before the holidays. So we have the by the time the survey ends, we can have a bunch of those. Okay. Uh, you know, at least preliminary okay. plans of attack. So what what day do you have? The Monday, December nineteenth. Okay. I'll be around. So yeah. Okay. I'm just not sure how much I can get done before then, but we'll try. Okay. Yeah, we'll get something done. We'll have, we'll have some conversations with like Mary and those people. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we can bring that back. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we, uh, perhaps we could all be on Zoom. <laughs> then it would be easier, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think Zoom works very well with this crowd. <laughs> <laughs> we all interrupt one another. Um, can we also book the next meeting after that? Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, so January 9th, that would be right uh, just a few days after the Survey Monkey closes. Yeah, that's excellent. That's a good idea. That, that, that's perfect. Yeah. Okay. So December 19th and January 9th? Yeah. And these are all Mondays, right? Yeah. Okay. Great. I think we'll have a, a little bit better idea of where we're heading and what we can do. And, when we need to do it. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm sorry that I was aggressive toward that CDC person. I, I didn't realize that all she wanted to do was housing. We're all passionate yeah. about one thing or another. <laughs> <laughs> no, no apology necessary. Oh yeah, there was. <laughs> Next time I'll know when you invite a speaker what exactly what she yes, said. Exactly. It didn't help that you couldn't hear me for the first half of the meeting. Yeah, so. No, I couldn't. I'm glad you moved. <laughs> <laughs> All no right. Motion to adjourn. Uh, Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye.